on this episode of Doing the Most, an episode you all have been asking for for a very long time. I am pleased to bring you, finally, Mead Nutrition 101. Moment brews and various authors, everything from mead to rose. Big creation, fermentation, and heat creation, doing the most. Now I'm not going to bore you all with a lot of context here at the beginning because we have a lot of information to get to, but I do want to throw a big shout out and a thank you to Travis for all the work that he's put into Mead Nutrition. I used his research quite a bit in putting together this video. There'll be a link to that in the description, but dude, amazing work. Thank you so much for what you've done for the mead making community. Also a big thank you to r slash mead and the wiki there and all the folks who contributed to it. It was also a part of my research for this as well as like thank you to everyone else on all the forums and blogs and places that I found bits and pieces to kind of put all of this together. Y'all are awesome. Keep making great mead. Now let's talk mead nutrition. Oh, oh. To understand mead nutrition, you need a grade school understanding on yan, ppm, and bricks. Mm -hmm. As long as you have just the smallest bit of context for these things, mm -hmm. the rest of this will make some sense. So, what is yan? Yan is an acronym for yeast assimilable nitrogen. This refers to nitrogen in a must that yeast can use to metabolize sugars into alcohols. Just having nitrogen in there doesn't really help. It has to be assimilable by the yeast. This means that on the molecular level, it has to be in a form that the yeast can grab onto and consume. Nitrogen. There are what are considered to be, by scientific language, to be organic sources, those derived from living matter and inorganic sources, those created from other molecules. For example, DAP, or diammonium phosphate, is made from a reaction of phosphoric acid with ammonia, the result of which is a nitrogen source that is granulated for use in winemaking. But because it's not derived from living matter, scientifically, it's not considered to be organic. So what's PPM? PPM stands for parts per million. Mm. And it's exactly what it sounds like. In a rudimentary sense, if you've got a tank of water that weighs a million pounds, and you toss in a fish that weighs one pound, your tank has one part per million of fish. In the context of water, when we talk about PPM, we're talking about milligrams per liter. So, for example, one milliliter of water weighs one gram. This means water's specific gravity is 1.000. So for those Americans like me who don't typically use the metric system, one milligram is 0 0.001 grams. So if there's one milligram of something in one liter of water, then there is one part per million of that substance in that water. Again, back to our fish analogy. So, what is BRICS and what does any of this have to do with BRICS? Mm -hmm. BRICS is measured as degrees BRICS, and this is the sugar content of an aqueous solution. So, one degree BRICS is one gram of sugar, like sucrose, in 100 grams of solution, and that represents the strength of the solution as a percentage by mass. Sounds like a lot, doesn't it? But just remember that BRICS, like gravity, is one way to measure the sugar in your mead must. Knowing the PPM of yan needed for your mead to have a smooth and problem-free fermentation requires knowing the potential ABV you're trying to get to and the nitrogen requirements of the yeast you're working with. According to Scott Lab's 2020 winemaking handbook, they have the following advice on nutrifying your must, and I'll just put it up here on the screen. So, for example, a low nitrogen requiring yeast needs 7.5 ppm of yan for every 1 degree bricks. Now again, this seems like a lot, doesn't it? Fortunately, depending on the nutrient you want to use, there are simple online calculators that will run the math for you and spit out simple instructions. So let's take a look at yeast nutrient options. Fortunately, in most areas of the world, proper forms of yeast nutrient are readily available. Some do not even require a trip to the homebrew shop. Here are the most common options used in mead making. Diammonium phosphate. Synthesized from the chemical reaction between ammonia and phosphoric acid, DAP is the most commonly used agricultural fertilizer around the world. 
Its prominence is due to its water solubility and high levels of nitrogen. The nitrogen within DAP is yeast assimilable and extraordinarily accessible. Due to this ready availability, in some sense, it is like giving the yeast an addictive substance. The yeast cells will seek out the easiest to access nitrogen they can get. So adding DAP to a mead must has the potential to draw the yeast's attention away from the other compounds in the must. Additionally, the physiology of brewing yeasts changes at around 9% ABV within the fermenting must. At this point, the yeast will become less and less likely to engage in uptake of inorganic nitrogen. So not only will DAP added or still remaining in the must at this juncture be wasted, but it can also contribute off flavors by remaining in suspension after fermentation has completed. DAP is a wonderful nutrient for many specific applications, though there are more holistic forms of yeast nutrient available. Fermado, a product manufactured by Scott Labs, described as a blend of highly specific inactivated yeast fractions that are rich in assimilable amino acids with a low amount of measurable organic yan. This does not mean that it is not an effective nutrient. In fact, it is my primary yeast nutrient. However, in very low yan musts, like traditional meads, using only Fermado may still carry some risk of faults or stalls. Fermade K. This nutrient is regarded as a relatively balanced in-between of Fermado and DAP, because it essentially contains both. It is described by Scott Labs as a blend of assimilable amino acids, diammonium phosphate, and inactivated yeast. For those on the leading edge of yeast nutrition research, Fermade K is a remarkable engineering accomplishment. But, like Fermade O and DAP, it has its specific place in the mead making world. Yeast hulls, commonly cited online as a nutrient for yeast. Yeast hulls are a dead yeast additive meant for unsticking a stuck fermentation. Acting as a sort of sponge for soaking up compounds that may be inhibiting your active yeast, they're meant to improve the environment in your primary vessel. As they are included as one of the many components in Fermaid K, the misconception that yeast hulls are intended to be used as a yeast nutrient has kind of propagated around the web. While yeast hulls do technically include some vitamins and nutrients as a product of literally being dead organic matter, they do not contain the substantive amount of free amino nitrogen yeast need as part of a balanced diet. Yeast hulls should not be considered a proper yeast nutrient, and instead used for their intended purpose, unless paired with a nitrogen source like DAP. Boiled bread yeast. This method is quite similar to that of using yeast hulls as a nutrient. However, it makes this list because it is still better than nothing, <laughs> and if paired with DAP, it will provide a more balanced nutrient than only using DAP. Additionally, it is perhaps the most accessible item on this list the world around. It is still not a wildly effective nutrient on its own, however. Typically, you would use it the same as you would use Fermado, but multiply the weight of your nutrient additions by up to like three times. High Yan Fruit Sources There are a few fruit sources, like mangoes, that are naturally high in yan. However, currently, there's not a lot of available, reliable information on yan content by individual fruits. For this reason, I would recommend mostly ignoring the yan contribution of fruit, unless you have a very good idea of its yan content. Raisins this is a myth popularized by the inundation of homebrewing books that flood the American market when President Jimmy Carter legalized homebrewing. We now know that raisins do not have significant amounts of yan and therefore are not a proper yeast nutrient. Think of it this way, if yan is regularly added to commercial wine musts fermented on the skins, why would a handful of dried up grapes ever be a good nutrient? So let's talk about nutrient schedules. Two methods for introducing nutrients into your must are typically recommended. Staggered nutrient additions, SNA, and front loading. Recommendations are based on the yeast and anticipated fermentation speed of the mead. Staggered nutrient addition regiments. Many years and barrels worth of research has gone into determining the best way of nutrifying mead must. Through this experimentation, we had the development of a process of adding multiple timed measured additions of nutrient. These staggered nutrient additions are designed to time release nutrient into your must. 
Yeast are not sentient. They are fungi. Therefore, yeast do not have impulse control. Nitrogen! When these voracious little microbes encounter an environment rich in nitrogen, they binge. The increased activity generates heat, and this heat can cause the yeast to throw off flavors and generate fusel alcohols that can take a long time to break down and smooth out. Staggering our nutrient additions so that the yeast have the nutrient they need, when they need it, reduces the risk of these temperature spikes within your fermentation vessel. For higher gravity musts, like those with a potential of 9% or higher, this provides for more consistent, regulated primary fermentation. Put simply, adding nutrients to our must prevents yeast stress that causes one set of off flavors and aromas, while staggering those nutrients helps to prevent yeast stress that causes another set of off flavors and aromas. Common nutrient addition protocols include staggered nutrient additions. The classic mead nutrient protocol, mead makers will simply calculate the amount of nutrient required for the must and divide it up as they see fit. Most commonly, this will mean four staggered additions of equal portions. However, some will instead opt for larger additions at the beginning of primary and step down toward the final addition. This regimen is simple, allows for a bit of whim, and is effective without overcomplicating the process. The Tazna 2.0 and 3.0 methods. Tailored organic staggered nutrient additions are perhaps the most used nutrient schedule the 2.0 method, later upgraded to 3.0, calculates the nutrient requirements for the homebrewer based on batch size, gravity implications, and yeast selection. Tazna 2.0 utilizes Fermato, or sometimes yeast holes, to provide a boost to organic nitrogen within the must via four nutrient additions. Some have adapted Tazna into Tyazna, the I being for inorganic, which uses Fermate K in place of Fermate O or hulls. This regimen is available in the Tazna 3.0 calculators. These 3.0 calculators also include some changes for handling of ale yeasts. The Travis Blount Elliott method. This method, which is quickly becoming favored by many modern practice mead makers, involves using Fermate O for the first two nutrient additions and finishing with a combination of Fermate K and DAP for the latter two nutrient additions. This method affords a more metered and holistic approach that factors in potential negative flavor contributions and legal limits for certain nutrient types. It also trends toward a more stable minimization of temperature spikes, and online calculators are available to customize this nutrient regimen to your yeast and must. And as I mentioned previously, front loading. Some meads, particularly lower alcohol hydromels and session meads, may ferment so quickly that a staggered nutrient addition protocol could not be completed in time. For these brews, it is often valuable to instead front load a slightly lower nutrient load all at once. Often the best choice for this is DAP, pitched in at the 24 hour mark. However, Fermato works well for this purpose also. Front loading of nutrients is not necessarily as researched a procedure in mead in the way SNA is, however, Calculating your nutrient requirements for a sub 8% ABV mead using a nutrient calculator, adding all those addition amounts together, and reducing it to as much as 80% of the original volume can create a decent baseline for front loading a hydromel. For example, if your Tazna 2.0 calculator instructs you to add a total of 10 grams of Fermato to a hydromel, you could feel comfortable in front loading 8 grams at 24 hours into fermentation. The basics are that yeast need nitrogen to stay healthy in their conquest to eat sugar and turn it into alcohol for us. And without nitrogen, you can get off flavors and long, long aging times. If new to mead nutrients, choose the type of nutrient that works best for you, use a nutrient calculator to determine how much you need and when, and if using a commercially available wine or beer yeast, check with the manufacturer to see if they have a data sheet you can refer to regarding how much nitrogen your yeast needs. I know, that was a lot of information, and we didn't even cover yeast rehydration nutrients. We, we, we could have done a whole section on GoFirm. I guess maybe I will save that for another time. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a lot when you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. And of course, join our Discord community, follow us on social media, Become a part of the Doing the Most community. You'll like it. I promise.
Until next time, my friends, happy mead making, happy brewing, happy wine making, and cheers. Cheers to a well-nutrified must. <laughs>